What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome back to Football Manager Simulate. Today we have Jaden Sancho at Manchester United. This one was requested by a few of you guys. I know a lot of United fans are excited by the prospect of the English winger joining them. And uh, well, today we're going to be taking a look at how he gets on for the 2020-21 season here at Manchester United. So we have him in game here. Of course, if we just have a quick peek at his history, of course, started his career at Watford, moved to Man City, really made a name for himself at Dortmund. And uh, whilst the transfer fee hasn't been announced by any means at the time of recording I just set it to 80 million pounds I guess it might be interesting to see in hindsight how close I am with that guess um, you guys can let me know what kind of money you think he might move for down in the comments anyway for this database we have used a real fixture results um, database to sim the season up to February and then from February to the end of the year without the whole global situation going on that I can't talk about in videos uh, we simmed the remaining games of the Premier League season as a result, Manchester United finished fifth, so it's going to be interesting to see how Sancho gets on. Of course, no Champions League football to be playing for this year. Will he be able to make a splash in the Europa League? Can he help propel Manchester United towards the top four and indeed towards titles? So here we go, one year into the future. Okay, guys, so we are now in June 2021. Jadon Sancho has had one year at Manchester United. How has he got on, you may ask? He looks like he's done okay. In fact, he's done pretty solidly. His average rating in all competitions is 7.08. 25 appearances in the Premier League, 9 appearances on off the bench, and 9 goals in that time. If we just look, has played predominantly at right and left mid. Apparently, at some point, the United manager got drunk and played him at centre-back. But yeah, it looks like he's been just playing either wing. Obviously, an incredible versatile player, a player who can play either wing naturally. And well, let's take a quick peek, shall we? How did Manchester United get on with him in the team? The answer is not so well. They finished down in sixth in the Premier League, which I guess is below expectations by all accounts. What was their media expectation? It, well, their media prediction was fifth. Solskjaer is still their manager. I'm a little bit surprised about that. You can see here, Bruno Fernandes listed as their key player. He got 17 goals and 10 assists. However, he does want to leave to go play in the Champions League. You can see here how they lined up in game Manchester United. So alongside Sancho joining, it looks like they signed Van de Beek. Uh, and besides him, it's pretty much the United team that you would expect. Let's just have a quick look. Who are the players getting the goals and really rivaling Sancho? Um, so you can see here, Fernandez and Rashford, the top two goal scorers at the club. Rashford having a very, very good first season. Sancho, the third highest goal scorer in the league in all competitions, is nothing to scoff at. But to be honest, it looks like it's been a little bit of a one-man show. Bruno Fernandez running it. To be fair, Rashford's done pretty well too. In terms of overall average ratings, you can see um, Martial and Lingard. Very, very good ratings. I imagine that they are competing with Sancho. Uh, for people wondering, if we just have a quick look at Jadon Sancho and Anthony Martial compared head-to-head, -head, you can see the direct comparison here. Um, Sancho probably edges it on the whole, although uh, Martial's physicals are just slightly better. But yes, it looks like fierce competition in the wide areas that is keeping Sancho from becoming the kind of player that starts all 38 games of the league season. In terms of Manchester United's league season, um, obviously a bit of a write-off. In cup competitions, they lost in the semi-final of the FA Cup to Southampton. They lost in the Europa League knockout stages to Valencia. Greenwood and Marcus Rashford's goals, not enough for them there. And in the EFL Cup, how did they get on? They lost in the first round away from home against Norwich. So, not a particularly great season. I am half expecting Solskjaer to be given the boot if they put in another season like that. Sancho doing very, very well for himself. Um, will be interesting to see if he can continue to develop because, of course, he is 21. He has loads of potential in FM20. I do anticipate his current ability to be given a big upgrade for FM21. But, yeah, he's got room to grow. Will he continue to do that growing at Manchester United or will he do it elsewhere? Let's jump forward another year and see how he's getting on, shall we? Okay, guys, so here we are in June 2022. Before we get into this, just a quick reminder, if you're enjoying this video, if you want to see more videos like this one, drop a like on the video. And if you've got a suggestion for an experiment or simulate like this that you would like to see me do here on the channel, let me know it down in the comments. Go down there, leave your suggestions. If there's some that you see that you like the idea of, give them a thumbs up. Anyway, we're in June 2022, Sancho's second season here at United. You can see he's played significantly more football, of course, in the Europa League again this year. His average ratings look absolutely outstanding here, a 7.52. If you're not familiar with Football Manager and you don't play a great deal, that is very, very good. That is kind of star player performances. Only eight goals and five assists, but five player of the matches. 
And it seems like even when he doesn't score or get assists, he's still doing a great deal for the club. You can see he's putting top performances on both wings as well. Looks like he is still being deployed wherever United really need him. Let's have a look. United finishing second in the Premier League this year. Solskjaer had a little bit of patience shown in him, and I guess United fans have been rewarded for that. Second in the league, they finished six points behind Manchester City. Fernandes again leading the goal scoring and assist charts. Jaden Sancho, however, with a higher average rating. Seems like Fernandez and Sancho are kind of running the show here. In fact, you can see Sancho listed now as the key player. I did also notice he's got a few more caps for England. It doesn't look like he's playing super regularly for England. Um, I guess he didn't have the best of first years. If his form's not good at club level, it's difficult to see him playing internationally. But um, that seems to have changed. And additionally, his development has been outstanding over the last year, continuing to improve a lot. Um... It'll be interesting to see, you know, if he stays at United now. They finished second. They've got that Champions League football he wanted. You can see they've still got Rashford and Mason Greenwood up top. Behind a few new players, Reguillon out at left back, Isco and Barrow playing at centre mid. But it's still a, a largely familiar United team besides those few players, which a couple of years in is a bit of a surprise. In terms of other competitions, how did United get on? Uh, so in the EFL Cup, they lost to Liverpool on penalties. Alisson's own goal was not enough for them there. Um, in the FA Cup, did they go marching all the way? They lost in the final to Everton after extra time. Sancho only putting in a 7.0 in the final. Didn't live up to expectations. And in the Europa League, they actually lost to Red Bull Leipzig 3-2, which is um, unfortunate, I suppose. They drew the home leg 0-0, just couldn't quite get it done. So not really making a splash in Europe, that is for sure. It will be interesting to see you know, how much pace United show. It seems like they are making some progress, considering their prediction was sixth. To finish second is a very, very good year. Will Sancho and Fernandez be able to keep on carrying them for the foreseeable future? Um, you can see here, Sancho, I gave a five-year contract to. He's got three years left on it. He's not signed a new deal. We'll simulate until the end of that contract. And, well, let's go forward one more year. Let's see where he's at. Let's see how he's getting on at United. And uh, if he's becoming a key player for the England national team. Well, without stating the obvious, this is not Manchester United red we're seeing anymore. Jadon Sancho, now of Barcelona. You can see 26 caps for England, so he has now become a regular. His development has continued. He looks absolutely outstanding. And, uh, well, did he move during the season, at the start of the season? If we have a look here, he moved actually at the end of last season. So only two full seasons at Manchester United. That second place finish was not enough, and he moved for £103 million to Barcelona, where he's had not quite as good a season as he did previously in terms of average rating, but actually an extra goal, a few assists, three player of the matches. And, uh, well, how did Barcelona get on with him? Let's have a quick look here. So Barcelona finishing second. They were predicted to finish first. It was not enough. Interesting to note, he is listed as their key player alongside players like Dybala, like Mane, like Griezmann. I mean, that gives you an idea of how good Sancho's potential is in FM20, and it does feel like he has realised it. So how did Barcelona get on here? Let's have a quick look. So Champions League, they went a long way into it. They lost in the final, however to Real Madrid, which is a little bit of a shock uh, and a bit of a disappointment, I imagine, as well. In the Copa del Rey, they did win in the final, however, against Madrid. Um, and, well, on the whole, it looks like they had a, a pretty successful season. I guess one question that has to be asked is, how did United get on without him? Just noticed here, actually, Raheem Sterling playing for Real Madrid. That's interesting. The idea that you could have Raheem Sterling and Sancho playing against one another for the two biggish Spanish sides... I don't want to say I don't envisage that happening. I would love to see that happen. It does feel a little unlikely at the moment. Who knows? Maybe if you're watching this in the year 2023, you can laugh at me suggesting that Raheem Sterling and Sancho wouldn't be facing off against one another um, in La Liga. Anyway, Manchester United in Sancho's absence. They finished second. So they still did the business. They didn't miss him much. Bruno Fernandes continuing, it would appear to be their key man. He's still there in the centre, attacking mid position. If we just have a quick look at their season summary, they lost in the FA Cup final again, which is a bit disastrous. In the Champions League, they got knocked out to PSG in the quarterfinals. And they also lost in the EFL Cup final. They are still showing patience in Solskjaer. I mean, they're making progress, but they are continually bottling the finals, which I guess is a bit of a concern. You can see they've brought in Jovic. Um, I guess he's probably the player they signed with all the money they got from Sancho. I feel like seven goals in 28 probably isn't, 
you know, a particularly good return considering how much Sancho contributed. But Jovic is very, very good in FM and didn't have a bad season by any means in terms of average rating. Well, anyway, considering this video is entitled Jadon Sancho at Manchester United and he's left after two years, we'll go forward just to the end of what would have been his contract at United to 2025, see how United are looking, see if Sancho is still at Barcelona. Um, so for the last time, let's jump forward and see how Jadon is getting on. So it's 2025, Jadon Sancho is just about entering his prime, he's 25 years old. And to be fair, he looks absolutely outstanding. It looks like he has become the player that England fans are probably dreaming and hoping that he can become. He's had a couple of exceptional seasons for Barcelona. If we just look at his milestones, um, you can see here that he's obviously gone from Dortmund to United to Barcelona, where he has stayed. If we just look at competitions, what has he won over the years? So he won the European Championship with England. Uh, he won the Supercopa de España with Barcelona this year, as well as the Sop <laughs> Copa de Sud. Uh, it's the Copa del Rey. Just call it the Copa del Rey, Jack. Don't start complicating things. But it looks like they've not done anything else besides that. I say that like it's terrible. It would appear that Barcelona are forever the bridesmaid and never the bride, and that they are just repeatedly finishing runner-up to Real Madrid. You can see here, Real Madrid, 101 points. Raheem Sterling tearing things up. In fact, only Raheem Sterling, Bernardo Silva and Jadon Sancho, um, you know, two, three Premier League players in the, in the top three for average ratings. But the top two for also former, well, also former Man City players. It's interesting, actually. All three of them formerly of Manchester City. You wonder what would have happened if Sancho had never left to go to Germany. But yeah, he's put in a few very, very good seasons. But Barcelona just not winning anything which is a little bit of a disaster. You can see their lineup here. So they've got a, a pretty strong squad. Emre is their manager, which seems a little odd. Sancho is considered their key player. And as for Manchester United, five years in the future, how are they looking? Well, I'm sure United fans will love to see this. Bruno Fernandes is still at your club, and I imagine he's just been the pillar this club has been built around for a number of years. He's maybe tailed off a little bit in the last few years, but still putting in exceptional performances at 30 years old. Um, if we just have a look, you can see Manchester United winning the Premier League as well for the first time ever, <laughs> say ever, in the simulation, I mean. Um, they've won it. They've, well, ground to a halt Man City's run of dominance, four Premier League titles in a row. United doing an exceptional job there. Mbappe for Man City could not carry them enough. And Troy Parrott, too, too, too strong. Too strong is Troy Parrott. But yeah, Manchester United, in the absence of Sancho, have they missed him perhaps a little bit? You can see before this year, they did finish fourth. Um, did they make any kind of big splash in any of the other competitions? They won the FA Cup final, which I suppose is something. Was Solskjaer still their manager? He's not. Gallardo's their manager. I guess Solskjaer probably got sacked last year. Indeed, he did at the end of last season. So all it took is getting rid of Solskjaer. For United to be successful. I, I, I don't want to make any comment. I'll let you draw your own conclusions as to whether or not that might be reflective of real life. Either way though, interesting to see how Sancho got on. Had a very, very short stint at Manchester United. But in that time, he was exceptionally successful. It is interesting. I know it's talked about a lot. Do Manchester United have the pulling power to you know pull a player away from a Barcelona or a Real Madrid? Um, you know, are they still of the stature that they once were? I feel like Manchester United as a household name in football is always going to have pulling power. But with young, ambitious footballers, you know, how many of them really want to buy into the project? I guess that's a, a question that's going to be asked. And I guess we will find out by whether or not Sancho officially joins Manchester United, because at the time of recording this, he has not gone to them. Anyway, let me know what you made of this simulation. As I said before, if you've enjoyed this video, drop a like on it. Uh, how do you think Sancho will get on? Do you think it's the right move for him to go to Manchester United? Do you think he will go to Manchester United? Or is there perhaps another club you think he would be a better fit for? I would love to know your thoughts down in the comments. Anyway, that is all from me today. Thank you for watching. If you're new around here, subscribe. I'll catch you on the next one. It is me, Jack, and I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.